Hi everyone and welcome to another adventure of Creepy Places of New England. This time we're in Atlanta, Georgia, where we're going to be telling you the story of and trying to get in touch with Mahaley Lancaster. But just look at this. Amanda Mahaley Lancaster was born on October 18, 1875, in Heard County, Georgia. To many, she was a witch due to her fortune-telling abilities, which she was doing at the age of 12. Stuff she would advise people about often concerned gambling, pregnancies, marriage, and stolen property. When not doing fortune-telling, she was involved with lore cases and politics. In 1915, she voiced support for Leo Frank, a man accused of murdering 13-year-old Mary Fagan. In this situation, anti-Semitic feelings in Georgia led to his unjust conviction, and he was later lynched by a mob. Mahaley was involved in Frank's defense and one of the few public voices in Georgia to defend him. In 1926, she was the first woman to run for Georgia legislator, though she lost. However, she is most famous for the murder case in Coetta County in 1948. In that case, wealthy landowner John Wallace murdered sharecropper tenant Wilson Turner over stolen cows. The story goes that after the theft, Wallace went to her to find out who stole this cattle. She told him it was Turner, but that he was not to harm him. Wallace did kill Turner and placed his body in a well. Some time later, Mahaley confronted him saying she knew he murdered Turner and that he will pay for it. Wallace, now in fear, had two other sharecroppers retrieve the body from the well, then burn that body and had the ashes dumped into a stream. Coetta County Sheriff Lamar Potts consulted Mahaley over the murder, and with her psychic predictions, the sheriff issued a search warrant for Wallace's property where they discovered the human remains. During the trial, Mahaley testified against Wallace, and he was to have said that she was trying to put a spell on him. After Wallace was convicted, his lawyer stated, Not since the 17th century has the testimony of a witch been allowed in the court of law. John Wallace was executed November 3, 1950. The events of the trials were written into a book, Murder in Coetta County, by Margaret Ann Barnes, which was turned into a TV movie in 1983 with June Carter Cash, wife of Johnny Cash, played Mahaley. You say you saw a body in the well. How did you see? Crawfish's eyes are in his tail. Mine are in my head. You can tell what's going to happen in the future, can't you? Well, I'd like you to tell what's going to happen to me. <laughs> you look at here. You might just get what Turner got. Duh. <laughs> she continued to give readings until she died in 1955. Her life and actions were written about in the book Oracles of the Ages by Dot Moore. And we are in Georgia and we're on our way to go see Mahaley Lancaster and going along with this spirit investigation we have Sarah. Hi. You probably remember Sarah from England. Remember? You giggle. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, actually uh, Sarah's told me about Mahaley and uh, Mahaley we're going to her grave right now which is our Carney Head United Methodist Church. See, there's the sign. We're going that way. Well, here we are. We made it to Carney Head United Methodist Church. And this is the church. And this is their actually pretty interesting um, graveyard that they have here for the, for the members. And we have Sarah here. And Hi. Sarah is going to talk to us about Mahaley a little bit. And it's kind of funny because Sarah's wearing the Wicked shirt. Hey. And uh, Mahaley was a witch, wasn't she? She was. She was a witch. As we, why do take a walk and we can talk a little bit about her? Um, she was not only a witch, but she was also a psychic. And a politician. And a politician. She was a card reader. And a mother. And a mother. Um, 
She was also a lawyer, wasn't she? She was a lawyer. She was um, actually running for Congress as well. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to become the first female uh, state lawyer. Which was pretty, pretty big back then. Very big. Um, Mahaley was born in the year 1875, just to give you an idea, a time when women were not supposed to be lawyers. In fact, it was during her time that um, the, was the first women lawyers. Here's the graveyard. So let's go find Mahaley. Well, we actually found Mahaley's gravesite. And here it is, says A. Mahaley Lancaster, October 18th, 1875, died November 22nd, 1955. At the bottom it said, For neither did his brethren believe in him, which is St. John's, 7th chapter, 5th verse. And I'm going to back up a little bit. You can see it's encased, tombed forever. And we are going to try some different ghost hunting techniques here. Um, I am going to turn on, first of all, the heat gun to get a base reading. And it's 101. Wow, it's not that warm out today. 99. Mahaley is 88 degrees. Flowers are 89, so it ranges. Then I'm going to turn on the DVR. And at the same time. So let's start by asking, is there anybody here? And if so, what's your name? Is Mahaley around? You lived a pretty exciting life. Okay, next we are going to try the K2 meter. We're going to ask a few simple questions. Is Mahaley around? If so, please light up the dots. Mahaley, if you walk right in front, you'll be able to light up those dots. Actually, I feel a lot of peace here. Okay. Do you know how many children are buried here? <laughs> how many? A lot. Yeah. There are a lot of children here. There's a grave on the other side that the daughter was born and died on the same day and the mother died three days later. Wow, and you found someone who was exactly 33 years old? 33 years old, yes. Born in 1933? And died in 1966. Wow. Yeah. Talk about numbers. It's just a big numbers game. Well, Sarah, we want you to help out here. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be turning on the ghost box, which is this, which is basically a transistor radio that's been modified so that it doesn't stop on any one station and the spirits can use uh, all the different voices over the airwaves to create words to give us um, real live answers. Here I am. I get to go scanning. There we go. So, 
is Mahali here? Yeah, have a seat. Is there other, anyone other than Mahali here? And it, Devin? Okay. And can you tell me your name? Can you say Devin again? Bucky. Yes. Okay, right now I have my trusty eye obvious out. And we're going to see what it says. Turn it on. Mahaley, are you with us? If so, is there anything that you'd like to say? It's all so quiet. While I'm waiting for the ovulus to come up with words to see what it says, I actually want to try something new. Um, this is a new device that I want to bring into ghost hunting just to see if the spirits can manipulate it. So this is kind of an experiment as it goes by. Um, this is actually uh, used by carpenters. It's a stud finder. Um, if it was a true stud finder, it would be going off like crazy right now because I'm here. But that's another story. Um, Sarah, don't laugh. Um, so. This is what it does. What it does is actually it, ch it senses changes in density when when there's um, when you go from one density to another. Typically, it should be quiet, but when the density changes, kind of like when my hand gets closer to it, and that's how you can find a stud behind a wall, as the carpenter would need to, or you're hanging pictures or whatever. So I'm just going to hold this down, and if it goes off and will know that somebody's walking in front of it and has changed the density of the air in some way, shape, or form. So, um, Mahaley, if you want to help us out, um, you can walk right in front of my hand, right in front of this machine. And the obulus is saying, fraction, scent, and describe. Turn it on. I forgot to turn on the sound. Constant. Constant. So I'm going to start over. Mahaley, are you here? Is there something that you'd like to tell us? That must have been a tough existence, you know? It would be you very can tough. See things, hear things, feel things, and you know it. And other people just say, yeah, right, you're fake. I did not move this. The sun came out. That's funny, the sun came out and it went off. Yeah. Pencil. Mahaley, is that you? Are you responding to us? Let me shut it off. I'm going to turn it back on. Reset. Shape, couch, and pencil, she said. Mahaley, if that was you, walk in front of this machine one more time in my hand. Barry. Hole. Yes, you're buried in this hole. Is that what you want us to recognize? That we know that you're here? That must have been um, Mahaley's mother. Mm -hmm. I would think so. 
So Mahaley wrote that. Precious memories of mother will live forever. She picked a good stone. I like it. Yeah. And actually, why don't you show it? And actually, it's kind of funny because the memories of Mahaley, I think, will live forever. Yep. No, we don't seem to be getting anything here right away, but we have one more location to go to, so uh, stick with us. We're going to head out. which is at the Chattahoochee River. I love saying that word, Chattahoochee. And the um, reason that we're down here is because I'm gonna read an excerpt from a book that was written about Mahaley, and you'll see why, um, what happened here on the Chattahoochee River and Mahaley. So, um, reading, reading from the book of, uh, called The Oracle of the Ages, pages uh, 131. Well, victory is down near Franklin, over to La or towards LaGrange. The main thing to know is that victory is very close to the Chattahoochee River. Down there, the Hattachoochee is as wide as it gets. It's real deep down there, too, and it gets thick as mud after a hard rain. I think we can see that over there with the uh, mud that's showing. And that's what happened at Victory. A hard rain got the water up, and it wasn't fit for fishing, but you can't tell nobody nothing. So this boy, well, he really wasn't a boy, but a man with a wife and children, he let out early on a Saturday morning, and he said he was going fishing. He didn't come back that day. He didn't come back that night either. So the next morning, his wife went down to her daddy-in-law's and told him that she was worried and asked him to do something about it. So the daddy went off his john boat and rode around the river, but he didn't see a thing. So he came on back and got his brother to get his, his John boat, and they both looked. But still they didn't see anything. So the two of them went to the sheriff's office and reported the boy missing. Now, that message brought a whole gang of men from around Victory to the river, and they went up and down the river in motorboats and afoot on, along the river banks, but they still didn't find anybody. You know what happened next, don't you? The daddy came up here and told her story just like I told you. Mahaley told him that it would have been far better off if he had come up there first right away, right after the boy was missing. If he had come on, they might have could have revived him. The next morning, she could have seen him clear as day, right there on the Chattahoochee. That's what I heard. Hearing the story, I never felt so sorry for a man in my life. And Mahaley just blessing him out for not coming on like that was not his fault, like the boy still wasn't found. Then I heard Mahaley halfway apologize to him, and she said she was sorry that those children wouldn't have a daddy anymore, and that they were from a good family, and a lot of malarkey like that. The daddy was just sitting there, blowing his nose, wiping his face, and Mahaley just kept on talking, on and on. That's what I heard. Finally, she stopped fussing at him, making him feel bad. She told him to get a crew together and get in the river at Franklin and go down the river for about far five miles and start looking on the right side of the river. Right past where the Hillavachie Creek runs into the Chattahoochee, look real close around some tree roots there and you'll see him. He still has all his clothes on except for his hat. She said, you'll see his hair. It's kind of longish, floating around his face and stuck on his eyes. He's there. The daddy left and would have been all Mahaley knew, except she saw it on the news that the body was found in that exact location. So uh, apparently she was good at what she, would, what she did, and she could tell um, what people needed to know. Well, we're now on the banks of the Chattahoochee. I'm not sure how far it was from where the, the boy was found, but 
maybe um, the spirits travel up and downstream. We're just going to try a little uh, spirit investigation here. I have my trusty ovulus going. Sarah's taking trusty pictures. And um, let's um, see what we can get. So I'm going to ask, is there anybody here? Is the boy, man, that was drowned still here? Do you think you could have been saved if Mihaly had gotten, gone to first instead of your father? Are you with Mihaly now? Young nice for stock